Hi, my name is Emma, and I'm a certified Dubsado specialist. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about the new Dubsado Forum Builder. So before we get started, I want to show you two pages side by side for you to see if you can tell which one was made in Dubsado and which one was made in Squarespace. So take a look at these two pages. One was built with the Dubsado Forum Builder and one was built with Squarespace. Before, with the old Forum Builder, Dubsado forms would always have a lot of white space around them unless you used a CSS coded form. With the new form builder, the difference is that the way you use containers or what used to be called columns has changed dramatically. So instead of, you know, you had a certain width and that was basically it, you can stretch your container to go, you know, as narrow uh, container in the middle of your screen all the way to going the entire span of your screen. So that's the biggest uh, advantage, and that's why right now it's more difficult to tell which one is which. So I'll scroll down. If, you're, if you use Squarespace, you might be able to tell which one's which. Um, and there are some telltale signs here that point that it's a Dubsado form. Before, it was a lot more obvious when it was a website and when it was a Dubsado form. Now it's not so much. So the advantage is that you don't necessarily need a CSS coded form in order to create a stunning form that matches your website or other elements of your branding. Before you could use images, colors, but anything else, like if you wanted images to span the screen, um, you wanted to put image as a background, um, all these things had to be done with code. Now that's not the case anymore. So I'm just going to keep scrolling down and you can see that this one on the left, this is the Dubsado form. You can see the submit button, you can see the, the form elements, um, these select buttons, these things. I didn't add any code to this form. So those are some telltale signs that it is a Dubsado form. And this, you can see these overlapping um, elements here those are Squarespace. Okay, so let's get into the features of the new Dubsado Form Builder. So to turn on the new Form Builder, you're going to see in your Form tab, you're going to see this a notification here, and you can turn it on. And you can also turn it off. Like It's not like you set it and you can't go back. You can, but it's going to give you this warning that it will not be available after January 31st, 2023. So just hit got it and you can go back. So now let's go, let's turn it on and let's go into a form to see what that looks like. So this is the form that we were looking at earlier. So even though the new form builder is on, you can turn off the new form builder features on any individual form inside of your account. And this is, this is important for forms that have CSS code on them. They may not look the same, like that may, the new form builder may be impacting your CSS coded forms. Um, if you've purchased any, I'm pretty sure your provider will notify you um, if you need to do anything, make any changes to your forms. But if you wanted to turn on the legacy mode, which is the way to kind of go back to the old form builder settings inside an individual form, you're just going to go here to the settings of your form, scroll all the way down move my photo here and you can turn it on and when i turn it on you're going to see that my form looks quite different and that's because the new form builder features are now turned off so things like background images have disappeared so i can turn that legacy mode off i don't need it i don't have any css code on this form but that's how you would do it um, just to preserve the settings from the old form builder so the biggest change to me personally in this new form builder is containers. So containers are what used to be called columns, but the what you can do with them has changed quite a lot. So if I click on this container, the settings are gonna open up for that element. And you can see it's similar to before in the sense of you can set, you know, one, two, three, four columns. You can show the title that hasn't changed, but then you come here and these things, these features appear, so container width. So if I slide that, you can see that it changes, right? The container width. So what is the percentage that it's taking of the width of your screen? So the content width is 
the elements that are inside of your container, how wide are those um, in terms of the total width of the container? So I have mine set at 85, so it doesn't go the complete width of the container. Like that's 100%. I kind of wanted to give it some breathing room and um, I did this. So if you see, I have a container inside of a container and because containers can have background images, you see I selected a background image for this one and you can also change the opacity. So the background's white. So, you know, if you have like zero opacity, that's what it's going to look like. If you want to give it kind of like a washed out look, you can do this. I just went 100%, but then the container inside that container has a white background. This allows you to make your form look kind of like the website that I showed you. Side by side, they look pretty similar. So this one, this outer exterior container is a two column container. I just didn't put any elements in the second column. I put a container in this first column, gave it a white background and put some text in it. So that's how this works. So let's keep going on the elements, the features of the container. Let me move myself over here and you can add margins. So I actually added those to the interior container here. So if you see this padding is the white space around the interior kind of white space, so to speak. Sorry, let me go down. So I gave it 50 pixels to the left, right, top and bottom, just so that the text wasn't like hitting the edges of that container and I gave it a margin which is like to the outside of that container of 200 so if I make this zero you're gonna see they touch at the top so I gave it 200 <clears throat> so that there's padding at the top and the bottom so that that picture is more visible so this is these are all the cool features of what containers do it has a lot of different settings as you can see um, you can add color here so you can there's a color picker you can use a hex code and let's scroll down this form so that you can see some of the other containers so if we scroll down to this container this is a three column container and each column has an image and a package and i just gave the container um, a beige background so there's that hex code and then I gave it some padding at the top and the bottom. Let's scroll down a little bit more. Let's look at this one. This one is a three column container, as you can see. And then there's a container inside of each of the columns. Those have a white background. And then I just put an image and text. That's it. And there's padding, you know, if I scroll down, you'll see there's 80 pixels at the top and bottom. And these have 30 pixels all around, just so that it's kind of equidistant from the sides and the top and the bottom. So it looks a little bit neater. So let's look at these containers. They're titles, basically. And they're just one column. And they have a background color and they have a background image. But the opacity is at 5%. So the image, if I went all the way to 100%, it would be that color. So if I go down to 5%, it's kind of peeking through, um, but yeah, it's, it's staying with the brand colors. And then I just added text and there's some padding at the top and the bottom. Pretty simple. But then all I have to do is duplicate that to use it as titles for the other sections in this form. Another cool thing about the new form builder is simply like I did before, I just clicked on the container and I can see all the settings. If you click on the text, you can edit in line and then you just click, you make the change that you want and you click save and done, right? So it's a lot simpler than it was before just to make quick edits to something. You just click on it and you can see the settings and you make those changes and done. So let's go through the form menu. You can see on the left hand side, there's this main menu and this one hasn't changed. The elements that you can add to your forms are the same as before. So it used to be called columns, it's called containers, but everything else remains the same. There aren't any changes. Even HTML blocks can be added, but all your options for your form elements are the same. So in form settings, this is what used to be at the top under settings, you know, adding contracts, letting people choose multiple packages, invoices, that all stays the same. Public proposals, that's also the same. 
What's different now is that you can add legacy mode. You can turn that on and off. That's really the change in the settings. Form styling is its own menu. It used to be kind of mixed in with everything, but now it's separate. So what's the font that you want on your questions, the size, the color? Um, if you want to add padding at the very top and the very bottom of your form, you can do that here, but you can also do it in your containers. And now there's the option to add custom CSS. So if you wanted to add CSS for something that affects your entire form, um, basically like adding fonts or colors, those can be done inside of here. And then sharing, I love this change. This is also only for public proposals, but the cool thing is now you just click and copy. Before it was, honestly, I used to get frustrated because I'd have to select it. And sometimes the box would close before I had selected the entire URL. So that was something I personally found frustrating. So this to me is, is really nice to have this feature. You just click and copy. So this was a little overview of the Dipsado form builder. Um, I'm super excited to have features like background images and containers that span the width of the page, um, being able to add background colors. All of these are super helpful uh, to build, to add more you know, design options to building Dipsado forms. And as always, if you need help with your Dipsado setup, feel free to reach out and book a free consult so we can talk about you know, where you're struggling and how I can help um, and any recommendations that I might have just to be able to help you set up Dubsado for success. See you next time.